So you just installed Veeam Backup and Replication or perhaps upgrading from an earlier version. Well, in order to take advantage of our new CDP policies, we need to configure one additional component. That component is the CDP proxy. And in this video, we'll do exactly that. It takes just a couple of minutes. So without further ado, let's jump into the lab and walk through that wizard. So now that we're in our lab, you'll notice we're inside of our home pane looking at our jobs. We have one simple CDP policy set up. There's three objects syncing continuously. And just like true CDP, as those changes occur and not waiting on a scheduled interval, we're gonna go and send those changes over and really get that highest, most up-to-date availability on those uh, mission critical machines. But in order for this to be successful right, and get these nice green healthy check marks, we wanna make sure we have the proper components in place. Now, the one we wanna to consider today in this video is going to be the backup proxies. If you're familiar with Veeam, this process is really no different than creating those virtual machine backup proxies. Now, of course, with those VM backup proxies, you get one by default. Veeam CDP is a little bit different. We have to go in and designate a machine. But don't make that think you have to you know, specify a specific machine or buy more hardware unnecessarily. Right, you can use those same machines. As an example here, we have one host acting as that resource for all three of those different types of proxies. But to give it a quick example and showcase how quick it is to deploy these, I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and go into its properties. Now, you can choose any server in the environment as long as it's been added to the console. So if you don't see it within this dropdown, all we have to do is hit add new, choose the appropriate OS, and then proceed through that quick wizard. At that point, it shows up as an option here and we can proceed. So we go ahead and make that election as well as maybe some specific port considerations and then move on to that next step. Now, going into the cache, the cache is going to default to the largest volume on that server. So here it shows that uh, Z volume and with a cache size of about 10 gigs uh, by default. Now we also recommend about one gigabyte of cache per protected VM disk. So bear that in mind when sizing out these policies along with these proxies. Now traffic rules are gonna be pulled from those global network settings. And if I just click on this manage network traffic rules, it can quickly take me to those, uh, those global rules there. Now nothing set in place, but some quick notes is that you have encryption, throttling, and even a time period in which these rules are in place. Now, once we've designated those different rules, we can keep proceeding. And then it's just gonna give us a quick review of what we've set in place, the server, the server type, as well as the cache size and where we're gonna be placing that cache size. The next step, once we hit apply, we'll be uh, installing those com two components we see, both the transport and that Veeam CDP. In the status, you'll notice it's already existed because we've already went through this wizard and deployed those. So we're no real need to do that here in this example, but just keep in mind, it takes just a couple of minutes at most to accomplish that task. Now, once this is done, we have this, uh, this, this proxy in place, we can go and create those wizards. But we have a separate video on that and highly encourage watching it. But if you're just curious on where these come into play within those policies, let me just give you a quick look. So I'm gonna edit this back within our home pane. And then under our policy settings is where we'll see that source and uh, target proxy. By default, it is automatic selection and the software's intelligence does a great job of determining that for you. But if you do wanna uh, pin specific proxies to different policies, by all means, you can go ahead and do so. So for now, that includes, concludes this video, and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and again, be sure to check out the rest of that playlist so you can be as well informed about the Veeam software and enjoy it as much as we do. So again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.